Hi everyone, my name is Lionel Erko and I'm a technical marketing engineer working on Cisco's data center networking solutions. In this session, we will discover how you can make your network cloud native by applying GitOps practice to automate your Cisco ACI fabric using Git, Ashicorp Terraform, Kubernetes operators, and GitHub Actions. Let's get to it. So what is infrastructure as code? Infrastructure as code is a concept that drives to automate the provisioning and management of a complete technology stack that includes the infrastructure in the data center, compute resources, databases, and applications. By removing the human factor from repetitive tasks, it creates reusable, robust, and distributable snippet of infrastructure represented in a declarative way, like code. By considering that you can represent your infrastructure as code, we can apply well-known practices of modern software development to life cycle of the infrastructure code, such as version control, automated testing, CI-CD pipelines, and others. This improves reliability, and by reducing risk, can increase the speed of delivery of new infrastructure. One tool in our tool sets that we can use to achieve this is Ansible. Ansible is an open-source, agentless configuration management tool that uses a declarative language to create sets of reusable tasks that we call playbooks. Through a large collection of third-party modules and plugins, Ansible can manage a wide range of systems. Another tool in our tool sets that we can use to achieve this is Terraform. Terraform is an open-source, agentless infrastructure provisioning tool that uses a declarative language to create sets of reusable resources that are called plans. It also has a large collection of third-party providers and modules that allows it to deploy a wide range of systems. You might be questioning if you should use Ansible or Terraform in your organization, and I would argue that you don't have to choose as they can coexist and complement each other. We are committed in our data center networking products to develop our integration with both Ansible and Terraform, giving you the choice to choose one or use both. The next tool I want to present is GitHub Action. GitHub Action is not really a tool, it's more of a feature of GitHub, that allow you to trigger CI-CD or automation workflows directly from your GitHub repositories. And the idea of GitHub Action is that inside your repository, you can populate a single file which will be used by GitHub to trigger the action pipelines. And so that action pipelines can do a lot of things. It can build, deploy, or automate any of your projects. GitHub Action is very simple to use because you don't have to install any software. It is included as part of the GitHub website so if you're already using GitHub as your source code repository, it is very easy to put in place GitHub Actions. All of the elements we have seen up to now are part of the CI-CD pipelines classic set of tools. One of the new concepts I want to introduce to you is the concept of GitOps. GitOps is a DevOps practice which applies Infrastructure as Code's mantra to define a specific set of tools and a tool chain that can be used together to manage your infrastructure as code. The first pillar of GitOps is the use of Git as a single source of truth. Everything around configuration needs to come from Git. And pull requests and merge of pull requests are used to trigger events throughout your system. On top of using Git, GitOps introduced the idea of reconciliation loops that are used to update your infrastructure when the code change. Today, the concept of GitOps is revolving around Kubernetes. Let's now see how we can put this in practice. In this demo, we want to show you how a GitOps toolchain would be working together. So we start with our user, which will write our uh, infrastructure as code, and more specifically, we'll write it in a way that's understandable by Kubernetes. This code is then checked into the source code uh, repository, which is GitHub in this case. Every time you make a pull request, we will trigger the GitHub actions to trigger a series of steps. The first one is checking out the code, and then it's triggering the Kubernetes operators to execute and reconciliate the change. This Kubernetes operator in our case calls a Terraform plan. The Terraform plan then executes automatically against APEC. Let's see it in action. So the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Kubernetes cluster. You can consider these clusters to be my management cluster. It, it will only be used to run our Kubernetes operators that are going to trigger the change into the infrastructure. To install that uh, easily, I'm using Kind that allows you to build a single node Kubernetes clusters inside a Docker instance. So I first create my cluster. When the cluster is created, I can verify that I can access the Kubernetes cluster and that my kind cluster is now up and running. Using kubectl, I can check my namespace and my nodes to see in which uh, states they are. When the cluster is ready, I can pull a Terraform operator to be able to define custom resources that will trigger our Terraform plans that we will use to automate certain tasks against our ACI fabric. When it finished downloading, we can use kubectl apply to apply all of the manifests that define our custom resources, or CRDs, into the clusters. 
our operator is now installed and all of the custom resources have been created. You can also see that as part of the installation, the operator has created a specific namespace called Terraform-Controller, which is used for the operation of the operator. We can now get into our infrastructure as code repository. You can see that in this repository, we have a directory manifest, which contains a series of files which will define the actions that our operator should apply and in which condition. You can see that the first file defines to which ACI fabric it should communicate and a few variables that it should use. The second one defines what code should be run, so where is my Terraform plan that will be run. And in this case, we point it to the same GitHub repository we are just using right now. The last file defines what happens uh, when this is executed. So in this case, we define certain options, for example, that it doesn't ask for confirmation of Terraform when applying the configuration. So the only thing we have to do is keep applying these resources every time we want the system to rerun. So as you can see, in our repository, we only have the manifest. It is now time to make a change and create our first part of our infrastructure as code. For that, I'm going to create a branch. And in that branch, I'm going to create the main.tf file, which is my plan containing all of the steps I want to build. You can see that my Terraform plan is using our ACI providers to be able to query some information, that's what we call data sources. Uh, for example, in this case, the tenant, the bridge domain, and then it's going to create automatically the application EPG that represents the group of container we would want to deploy. Now that we have our file, we can commit that file to the branch and then push our branch to our repository. The change is now pushed to the branch, but it's not applied yet. We can see in our ACI fabric that we have our Kubernetes clusters that's up and running, but we don't see our EPGs that we want to create. Because our CI fabric is internal to our data center, it might not be reachable from the GitHub pipeline. To fix this issue, we can deploy what's called a GitHub Action Runner. This registers automatically to github.com and then it can pick up one of the workflow from there. Now that the runner is ready and registered to GitHub, we can go on github.com and check our new branch. You can see that GitHub automatically detects that there is a change between the branch and the master branch and propose to create a pull request. The pull request is used as a mechanism for approval inside the GitHub's workflow. In our case, I'm going to approve my own pull request, but in a normal fashion, you will not auto-approve your pull request. Somebody else would have reviewed that and authorized the change. We can see now that the code is merged into the main repository. This automatically triggers the GitHub action workflow that I put in place to deploy the changes of the infrastructure. This will create a task that will automatically trigger the checkout of the latest code, so it gets the latest version of the infrastructure as code, and then it triggers the Kubernetes apply to update the infrastructure. If we now check out our runner, you can see that our runners took the job and automatically run it locally. The runner is really useful if you have a firewall in between or anything else because it only does polling outside, so you don't need to have remote access inside your data center. If you go back to the github.com and we look in the actions, we can see that the action finished and we have the log of the execution of this action and what happens. If we now go into our epic, we can see that we created a new EPG that is named Terraform ACI Git Ops. You can see that this EPG inherits from all of the contracts of the ACI containers. So this is really easy for us to make sure that it has access to all of the necessary bits of Kubernetes. Now to show you that this works and that's a fully configured ACI configuration, we will want to create a new namespace specifically for our containers, which is called GitOps. And we want to deploy a series of containers there. So this container is called debug. And if you now go into uh, Epic, we can see that it's automatically categorized as part of the container default EPG. But that's not what we want. We want to move this into our specific new uh, Terraform ACI GitOps EPG. For that, we can use Kubernetes annotations, which will allow us to annotate the, the container, the deployment, or the namespace. And in this case, we are going to use the namespace for that, so that any container deployed in that namespace is automatically put in this EPG. We can see that once we have applied this uh, annotation, it automatically transfers the containers into the right EPG, applying the right policy. To recap what we saw in this demonstration, our user started by defining how the infrastructure will look like in both using a Terraform plan and how to trigger it using a manifest and custom resources. This was then checked into GitHub and more specifically, we created a branch and a pull request that was then approved. The approval of, of this triggered the GitHub actions to automatically deploy this into Kubernetes which puts that change using the Terraform plan into our epic. We then deployed a container there to show you the different steps. The steps around the container and the namespace creation could be easily added into these pipelines just to make it a complete GitOps operation for all of the elements involved. If you want to dive deeper into the world of our data center networking automation, here is a list of links to recommended content. 
learning labs on DevNet, and documentation on our modules for Ansible and resources for Terraform. Thank you for your time.